Like the video and subscribe right now, and I'll show you a picture of centipede doggo. Ready? 3, 2, 1. If you were able to be reborn as a newborn with your current memory, would you? I read that as current money and thought, what the hell is a newborn me going to do with $85? Strip club. Holy hell, other people think of this? I spend like 75% of every bus trip I make thinking about this. In my mind, though, the situation's a bit different, and also not possible, I get taken back in time to my birth with my current memories and knowledge etc. It would be awesome and shitty at the same time, I'd have to wait again, until I could drink, people would treat me like a child, even though I'd have a mind far above a child's, I'd be really lonely, all that. I would, though, be a god amongst people, and have a huge head stud which would allow for a much nicer adulthood. I'd also be taken back in time so, you know, I would be rich with investments and whatnot. I've been thinking about this as well, but more and more have been asking myself, what would I do with my future knowledge? I know when many of the major events would happen over my lifetime. Things like hurricanes, earthquakes, other disasters, wars, terrorist attacks, these are all things I could warn everybody about. But should I? Should I warn everybody about 9 over 11? How would that change the future? Would I be able to accurately predict anything after making a change like that? And what if I didn't? What if I said nothing? What kind of a person does that make me that I would let people die when I could have saved them? Too many questions to ponder. I can see it now. Me, three year old body in a supermarket parking lot. A lady just fell down, clutching her chest, still conscious. Nobody does anything. I, or three year old, yell call nine, double one. I run up to the lady and tell her to take some aspirin and relax. Some guy, not taking me seriously, says and why is that little man, he he he. I tell him it is a NSA ID that will block the activation of thromboxane. He doesn't know what that means, but is thoroughly impressed. She is so amazed she has a heart attack. I begin CPR, however my current body is too small to transfer enough oxygen or do chest compressions. I look at the man, and he nods in agreement. I talk him through how to do CPR. I run into the store and ask for a need. The store clerk laughs and says, I don't think a little guy like yourself should be playing with big people toys. I say, a woman just had a heart attack outside. Maybe if you did your goddamn job you would know what was going on. So, stop wasting my ducking time and give it to me. We establish a heartbeat. The ambulance arrives and takes her to the air. Everyone is standing in awe at the three year old. The government takes notice in my intelligence and supports my enrollment in a university at 5. I become the next to G-Hauser. I lose my virginity at 12 to a supermodel. You pop out of the womb. You're instantly more intelligent slash knowledgeable than any other being we know of that's ever been born. You don't cry like a little bitch after the doctor slaps you. You stare that mother ducker in the face. Maybe you attempt a wink. You have arrived. Infancy sucks, but you demonstrate to your parents that you are a god. Building blocks? Duck that, you're replicating the evil tower. As soon as your legs develop the physical ability to walk, you walk. No trial and error bullshit. One day you're not walking, and the next day you are. You demonstrate this to your parents by moving around the house in increasingly intricate patterns. Flailing about like a machine gun victim, while trying to hit little plastic toys above your head is four pusses. You practice meditation techniques, while sitting in your crib. It takes around two years for normal babies, to start stringing together rudimentary word combinations. As soon as you acquire the physical capacity to articulate words, you demand of your parents language books on English, French, Mandarin, Cantonese, German, Russian and Spanish. While your brain is developing you take full advantage and learn the shit out of these languages. Going through high school again. Duck that. By the time you're 2 you'll be recognized as an unsurpassed genius. By the time you're 5 you'll be accepted into an elite university on full scholarship. Once you graduate, you do whatever the duck you want. The world is yours. This perfectly articulates why I fantasize about this scenario every day. I would be the world's youngest PhD. Also, can you imagine going back to your teenage years, 
but instead of being all awkward, you had the confidence and intelligence you have now, you'd have such an edge when it came to the opposite Shreks. I don't know about you, but I'd become the world's most infamous pusshound overnight. The it could be somewhat boring slash annoying for the first 12 to 13 years. Then, the payoff. Things would definitely pick up once you graduate college and have that out of the way. Well yeah, living's awesome. Being dead less so. Plus I could eat way more bacon way more often. If I knew I'd be tossed into a baby when my heart gives out, a true man would eat more bacon, no matter what the cost. Imagine how much you could learn with the learning capabilities of a child. This is the most compelling reason for me. You would not only start with a lot more intelligence slash knowledge than any other child, but you would be able to take advantage of your newbile child's brain in a way that no kid ever has before. By the time you were 8 you could be trilingual and have a PhD in any subject you wanted. I think this is one of my favorite parts of the Reddit community as a whole. The participants love learning. Incidentally, this would be my primary reason for resetting my biological husk too. Oh the places we'll go. No way. You know the frustrated feeling you get when you have to deal with dumb people. It would be like that for the first 18 years at least. Plus the patronizing attitude everyone will give you because you're a kid. Life would be hell. There's a kid in my preschool that is super, super smart but has serious behavior problems. I'm convinced that a huge source of the misbehavior is that he's just frustrated at how slowly the other kids pick up stuff. If I were in his shoes, I'd probably be the same way. Go through really easy high school classes and have free time to dick around without consequences? Sure. Looking at jailbait doesn't make you creepy. This is an advantage for some. You already know how some people will be when they grow up. Your friends become lifelong friends. Awesome. Puberty. I'd probably spend 13 years trying to figure out how to limit the damage, even if I knew what was coming. Oh hey, you wanna learn how to? Sure, give it a try. Holy shit, you're a prodigy, isn't the cliche. Hindsight is 20 over 20? I could definitely go for having 20 over 20 foresight. I'd do that shit in a heartbeat. I'd spend the first 5 years doing exactly what I do now. Shit, eat and sleep, and spend the rest of my days being a boy genius with an insatiable taste for models. You don't think that given 5 years of such a sedentary life, that you would lose a lot of the information which would make you a genius? In a ducking heartbeat. I don't think you understand how often I actually think about this. If I had my memory, and was given the option of reliving an entire life, I would take so much advantage of my superior intellect, it would be intense. Things which I would consider AWK for the first few years. The inability to talk. The whole poop in myself all day every day. Breastfeeding would be AWK. I mean that's my mom. But I'm 16. Shrekshul frustration would be inevitable. For a few years. Until I get over it. But the moment I turn say 8 or 9, my life get exponentially better, I'll be getting bitches like 1, 2, 3, and be so superior to everyone in school, it would be the best. Like shit. Hell yes. Of course, that's not how consciousness works it would be a new baby with my memories. Not me but hey, what the hell. Why is this being downvoted? I was about to make the same point. Transferring memories from a person who is about to die is not the same thing as continuing that person's conscious life. I would miss family, friends, and so too much. I don't see how there aren't more people that agree with you here. Not only would I not see any of my best friends for a really long time, but I may end up not even meeting them again unless I follow the same chance encounters that I've had in this life. Yes, I would. I would imagine that having the brain of a baby would make it bearable. I would have these memories, but I wouldn't be able to make sense of them until much older. Admittedly to someone with the emotional level of an infant all those memories would be pretty scary, considering the shit I have seen in my life. I might be a traumatized, silent little child. That's interesting and probably true. I'd still do it to though. Having experienced all the pain of a past life, wouldn't I also be tough as nails for a child? I would pray for some little alpha shit to try and bully me. Sign me up. Nap. I wouldn't want to live my past 21 years over. They were great, but it would take a shit ton of work to get back to where I am. 
I mean I could invent Facebook and everything and me the greatest person alive. But I'm pretty ducking content with where I'm now. Facebook has already been invented. Everything that would happen would be new to you. That means you can get rich playing the lottery or betting on sports you would just be a very smart baby. No I won't. Because it will be like an oblivion or more rewind when you find out the quick save slash load key. It became too easy. But it won't be the save slash load. It'd be playing all the way through the game. Learning everything you can learn. And then starting the game over with the knowledge of what to expect. As long as I get to be a girl, imagine having your full consciousness while they were strapped you down and circumcising you against your will and having to live with that pain for weeks. Or you know, if you were born to sane parents that don't circumcise. No thanks. One life is good enough for me. Seen it, done it, no need to do it again. I have no fear of death or illusions that life is this super grand thing. Life ends, everyone dies, big deal, so what? Gonna get downvoted for this, but I expect something after the end of this life. Life is hard. I wouldn't give it up intentionally, but one ride with this set of memories is enough for me. I do it in an instant. Hell, then my sister would know what it's like to have to be the oldest sibling haha. I could build up money and throw it somewhere for myself until I was old enough in my new body. The possibilities are endless if you get a do-over. The possibilities are endless the first time around. Starting over as a kid with the burden of my current knowledge and life experiences? No. Going through 12 years of school again, never again having the magic of the first magical Shrekshul encounter, meh. Not to say I haven't enjoyed where I am, it'd just rather not spend 18 years doing things differently. Going through school for 12 years would be the best thing. It's basically dick around all day with minor work. Much better than a job. Do I have to do it right now? Then no. I could not leave my wife and children without a husband slash father and I would never choose to not have them in my life. Now, if my kids are grown, and you give the same option to my wife, so that we start life again, together, and skip the schooling slash college slash etc and just live a life together, then hell yes I would do it. I've thought about this for as long as I can remember, and I've just recently changed my mind. No I wouldn't replay my life if I had the chance. Lots of reasons, if anybody cares then they can ask. I don't see it like replaying you life, it's more like being armed with experience. You would still have to live and grow, but you would just have deeper insight into things that were happening. You wouldn't be tempted to touch fire. You would know the consequences of many things that you would normally learn through trial and error. Not saying you wouldn't make mistakes, but you could have a good head start at the second go round. Assuming your parents didn't smother you in the crib for being weird. I probably wouldn't, if only because it would be a lonely life. I'd never see my new parents the same way as I did my original parents. Same goes for siblings and other family members. Everyone I came to know and love in my past body would be dead well before I get a chance to relive my adult years. So no, I probably wouldn't go with it. Theoretically if you were reborn with your current knowledge, then all of your tacit knowledge would be transferred to dear newborn 7 ounce baby you, right? Doesn't this mean your motor skills and linguistic abilities would develop ridiculously quick? Everyone would think you're one of those genius Brazilian babies. Okay yeah I'm in. Yes yes and yes. I'd be in college at age 7 mother ducker. World's smartest baby. Hell yeah. I'd be paid just to wear a shirt. Plus it would be nice to have, you know, a chance to do it all again, the right way. High school would be a buffet. I would use that extra time to hone my body and mind. I'd spend 18 years learning languages, immersing myself in graduate level science and mathematics courses, building my body to Olympian levels. The world would not be prepared for awesomeness of my magnitude. Slash dreaming. Back to real life now. I don't see how that could work. For example, babies can't talk not because they just haven't gotten around to learning yet. They physically can't for a while. The brain just isn't far enough along yet. I could stand to jump in at 5 or 6. Although I'd have to keep things on the down low until at least my teens. It'll take some doing to figure out how kids are supposed to act again. You've been visited by a broccoli toad. 
from now on your broccoli will always turn into a real toad, unless you comment. I don't eat toads. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe for more daily videos.